Yeah, absolutely. But guys, we are super excited to be with you. Uh, we're continuing news you might have missed when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And uh, this is where we last left off. And I know Grunt's very excited because we're almost to the Predaplanes, right Grunt? I know that's what you were looking forward to talking about. Yeah. I'm excited about both of the sections we're going to talk about here, because I believe we left off on uh, weather. Yes, this is where, that's what I've got pulled up. So Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about these cards here. So the weather forecast, it's a spell, a field spell. You can only activate one card with this card's name uh, per turn. You can only use this card's second effect and third effect each once per turn. When this card resolves, you can place one the weather spell trap directly from your deck to your spell or trap zone face up. You can also tr uh, treat face up the weather cards in your spell and trap zones as the weather monsters. Ooh, that's interesting. <gasps> and use them for the link summon of the weather link monster. During your main phase, you can immediately after this uh, effect resolves normal summon one the weather monster. And then we've got the link three here. Uh, painter Moonbow. It requires three weather monsters uh, to link it off. If this card is link summoned, you can special summon one of your banished the weather monsters. The weather effect monsters this card points to gain the following effect. Quick effect. You can banish this card, then target one uh, monster your opponent controls. Banish it until the standby of the next turn. It's pretty good. If this link summon card is destroyed, you can special summon one the weather uh, painter rainbow from your extra deck. Ooh, okay. So Grunt, what what do you really like here about these? So the link three here doesn't really like it's good. The link three is fine, mm -hmm. but the real game changer here is definitely the field spell because it does yeah. what it should do and some. It really does uh, a lot more than it needed to. And I'm honestly, I don't think I can be any happier about um, how well they designed that. Yeah, I think it looks gorgeous. Yeah, it, it's a neat looking card there. And the effects are fantastic. Um, oh, Shadow, what do you think about that? Being able to use spell and trap cards as monster link materials. It feels like they looked back at what they did with all the true king cards and went, you know what? We should probably give someone else that too. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Especially I because... Yeah, uh, go there's ahead. the one weather there's the one weather painter that says when a weather card leaves the field, uh huh, you can put them back. This triggers for the summon also. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good stuff there for sure. Um, Grunt, do you see any downsides? Uh, not really. The weather is honestly a deck that has um had a lot of rough patches ever since it first came out. Um, uh huh. It's already got its own innate downsides where, um, you know, your opponent can negate them, returning to the field. Um, so I'll just give a brief uh, summary to those who don't know, because it's definitely not the most recent archetype. Um, weather came out at the same exact time as um, Magical Muskets. Mm -hmm. yes. And the entire gimmick around them is that the pagers are monsters that have a ton of effects that facilitate accessing their in archetype spells and traps, which are all continuous. Um, and they all do things where uh, the column in front of the spell trap and the column to the left and right, any weathers in those columns gain effects based on the spell or trap. It's yes. kind of weird for me to say that, but it makes a lot more sense in practice if you want to, you know, Mm -hmm. watch the deck in action on youtube um right otherwise a lot of them have stun effects like bouncing things uh further searching some of their new stuff lets them special summon or some of them even give them grand mole effects so it's good stuff and again not only when you activate this field spell do you get to you know treat your weather cards as um as link weather materials. monsters yeah that's crazy <laughs> Because I'll tell you guys right now, one of the things that Weather has no issue doing is clogging up their spell and trap zones with all their um, mm -hmm. canvases, as they're called, because all of them have so many great ways to facilitate them. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. The fact that you can also activate any canvas you want straight from your deck face up, even the traps, which some of those traps activating them face up, this could, you know, make going second still optimal for the deck if you're able to get it off. Right. Um, and you even get an extra normal summon, which uh, this deck can't really be happier about because a lot of them gain effects on normal summon, not special summon. So, mm -hmm. again, this there's nothing wrong with this field spell. It's If anything, it's kind of a crutch now because if your opponent wants to, you know, stop anything, they probably want to stop the field spell. But, yeah, yeah. and Moonbow, all I will say about Moonbow is that it's not bad. It's just that... um. Compared to Rainbow, which gives a ton more negation. Oh, yeah. Without this a doubt. Is, like, you you can go into this, but you you could always just go straight into Rainbow instead of waiting for this mm -hmm. to be destroyed, because Rainbow gives you a much better uh, control effect. Absolutely. But I do like that if this card ends up being popped, you can get that card out as well. So, um, and I like how it says if it's destroyed. So, you could pop it yourself and get the effect mm -hmm. here so uh that to me is putting things more in your control so i i do like the uh the card i, I think it's good i think it's good uh, yeah i mean the best part i was just saying mm -hmm. real quick the best part of the uh field spell probably is the link effect if only because getting their archetypal link out was always kind of a pain it never felt worth doing even as they kept giving it support to try and uh facilitate it so mm -hmm. This is probably their last ditch attempt, and I think it's a good one. It, yeah. again, lets you essentially make a Link 3 with one monster and a ton of uh, spells and traps you can keep recurring. Yeah, good stuff for sure. Uh, moving on to the Predator Plants now. So the first one here, uh, notice that uh, they've made them into Pendulum Monsters. So we've got a level 8 Dark Plant Pendulum uh, Monster. Here's the Pendulum Effect. You can use cards in your Pendulum Zone as a material to fusion summon a dark fusion monster as if they were monsters on the field. Oh yes, oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's really good. Okay, next one. If this card is used as material for a fusion summon and sent to the graveyard or added to the extra deck face up, you can place one Preta counter each on a number of monsters on the field up to the number of monsters you currently control. And if you do, any of those monsters are level two or higher become level one as long as they have the Predator counter. And then the next one here, it's a level one, and its scale is fantastic at zero. The other one was at eight that we just looked at. Uh, you can only use the pendulum effect of this card's name once per turn. During your main phase, you can fusion summon one dark fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as the fusion material. You guys have no idea how excited I am about this. Okay, and then you can use the monster effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is used as a material for a fusion summon and is sent to the graveyard or added to the extra deck face up, you can add one face up dark pendulum monster from your extra deck to the hand, except for this pendulum monster. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, Shadow, what do you like here? Honestly, I don't know enough about Predator Plants to fully see the implications. I just know that the first monster effect on Trances is crazy because that doesn't have a hard once per turn. Uh huh. Uh huh. And actually, neither does oh, you can't, the other one. Does but just the fact that you can fuse in someone using your pendulum cards, especially with all the pendulum support yes. that Dimension Force is getting yes. in general. That's just broken I, to me. Like good broken. <laughs> especially since placing counters does not count as targeting. Uh huh. So if you fusion summoned into the specific try to plant whatever it was i don't remember what it's called but it's the one that negates all monsters effects that have predator plant counters on yes, them. yes yes it's a level uh seven monster if i'm not mistaken i think or no it just 2700 attack i know what you're talking about yeah it just cleans up the field immediately if you're going second yes yes because unless they negate it which they're probably going to either a all the stuff's negated anyways or now you've used a negate well, and I like, too, that it's just for dark fusion monsters. There's so many good dark fusion monsters. I mean, this, yes, this definitely is going to see a lot of application. Um, Grunt, your thoughts? So, um, kind of hard to say here. So, Triantis and uh, 
Uh, I'll just call this one Bufo. Uh, Bufo here. <laughs> Both of them are definitely good to work in tandem. I mean, again, even outside of Predator Plants, you know, people are starting to look at um, the Frog, at least, and even the Mantis here as kind of a generic engine to um, facilitate fusion play. Mm -hmm. I've already mm -hmm. seen people experimenting online with uh, throwing this in with the new um, Albas support we're getting later this year. Oh, yeah. Because it's also fusion-based. Yeah. And people have found some cool stuff. You know, we'll go to the rest of the support here, which doesn't uh, lock you out of anything. And it's kind of obvious why some people are, you know, looking at certain applications for this deck. So, yeah, I don't know. There's not too much else to say. The Mantis obviously floats and Predator Counters. Um, long story short, Predator Counters um, have always been used with, like, the fusions. One mm -hmm. of their fusions is yes. literally... A walking skill drain for anything that has predator counters on it. And Another it's easy one. To um, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it is easy to summon, especially with this new support. So yeah. it's it's pretty darn cool. And the fact that um, the frog also lets you just add a pendulum to hand after fusion summoning. Um, this is going to see play in other pendulum decks that facilitate dark fusion summoning oh, yeah. because. A lot of fusions are dark. Well, so. I'm thinking of the the synergy with Harmonizing Magician. I mean, it, it specifically says add one face up dark pendulum monster from your extra deck to the hand. That card goes straight to the extra deck, and then it can't be pendulum summoned back from the extra deck. Then you have the recursion. So that there's just so many good things here uh, that they're doing, and it's making pendulums more viable, which I'm pretty excited about. So uh, the next one here, it's a level one. Uh, again, it's a dark plant, a predator plant monster. Blips, I think. B by blips? Biblips? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Biblis, Biblis. It's kind of hard yeah, to say with the double kinda P. Kind of funky. But uh, you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one predator plant monster from your deck to your hand, except for this card. If there is a monster with a predator counter on the field, you can special summon this uh, card from your graveyard, but you have to banish it when it leaves the field. And then we've got a level five uh, fusion monster. It just takes two predator plant monsters. You can uh, only use the first and second effect of this card's name uh, each once per turn. If this card is fusion summoned, you can add one predator plant monster or one predator spell trap from your deck graveyard or Face up extra deck from your hand. Shadow, that's what you were just talking about. These are hard, hard ones per turns, one of them. And mm -hmm. then you can target one monster of one opponent's a monster with a predator counter or one monster you control. Tribute it. And if you do, you get to special summon a predator plant monster from your deck. Oh, wow. Okay. Th this, this is pretty good. Uh, Shadow, what are you noticing with this? So... They both do have the hard once per turn clause. Right. It's, not, it's, the, it's, the, it's the first line text. But oh, is it for the pendulum? It's on the top. Uh, not for the pendulum, but for the, these two cards specifically. Yes, for these two cards, though. Yes, right, right. Yes, but, but I'm thinking of uh, if you wanted to fuse again, fuse again is what I was thinking. So Because you can add a Predator Plant monster from the uh, deck oh, or right. face up from the extra deck. So that went could, over my head. Yeah, you could get the card back that you were just talking about. So, yes, you can fusion summon this, do that, get them both back. Oh. While also chain blocking all the situ all the things you would want to chain block because they're all going to happen at the same time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this list is just crazy because it's just straight up a really good search card. Yeah. Good as well as a body. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at, it 2,500 really defense is good. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Looking at that uh, Predipit Bib Lisp as a real nice and easy relinquished anima target. Mm, yeah, great point. As yep. well as the ability to just straight up kaiju your opponent's monsters with the other one for any card out of your deck, that's effectively. Gosh. Yeah, this this is some support. Uh, Grunt, do you think it's going to get bonkers? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. People have already been crazy with the fusion in the... Uh... Despia slash Albaz lists I've seen people experimenting with oh, oh. just because literally if you are able to get any two Predator Plants, which mind you, the Ofra Scorpio engine is still live with this. Oh, um, oh my god. 
you can um, still, you know, add more predator plants, including one of the pendulums you need, or you can add one of their spell traps, which makes more sense in archetype, but, you know, it works. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's just good stuff. I can't really speak enough. It's not a boss monster, but it's no. a good extender, and that's yes. honestly what they needed in their fusions was a more um, active extender, and this is it. You know, you can tribute a monster your opponent controls for the special summon. That's just good generic stuff. You can summon the um, Darling Tonia Cobra with this and gain the effect if you're not able to get it off your scorpion. Um mm -hmm. And Biblisp is literally just, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can just, you know, fuel your hand again, and there's plenty of Predator plants you might want to add. I can honestly not speak well enough about these. These are wow. um, just what the deck needed. Yeah, absolutely. And then we've got the next one here, Starning, uh, Starving Venom Predator Fusion Dragon. It's a level 10 Dark Dragon Fusion. Oh, it just takes one Dark Fusion Monster plus one Fusion Monster. So you've got to have two fusions. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. Once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you contribute one monster with a predicounter counter from either field, and if you do, negate the effect. If this fusion summon card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent, you can target one dark monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Oh gosh. So wait. So it said that last part, if this card is, if this fusion summon card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent, then you can target one dark monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Can't I just resummon this then again, Grunt? Yes, you can, oh but, it does, but it does not loop endlessly because it only does this if it was fusion summoned. So it either brings itself back or you can bring back one of its materials if you want, which you might want to, depending on what you fusioned mm -hmm. it with. Um, this is um, probably something you'll see more in a pure Predator Plant deck or something that's especially running, um, well, pretty much anything in the deck that's going to be running, you know, Super Poly or other extensive mm -hmm. fusion combos, mm -hmm. mostly because you don't really need to negate that many effects if you have Draco Stapelia on the field, at least with how it's used as a skill drain. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting for sure. Shadow, your thoughts? It's neat that it refreshes its its negate when it special summons itself. Yes, I was thinking that as well. That is not bad at all. Um, so, I mean, you have the potential for two negations. So I, I think that's kind of cool. It's going to be a nice super poly target against Despia. Yes, I, I thought to myself... Because it says Dark Fusion Monster plus one Fusion Monster. If you're playing a Fusion deck, this is a wonderful card to have. Um, so I'm thinking of even Alistair. So um, let's say I've got a Dark Fusion on the field. He brings out Makaba or, uh, or one of the other ones. And then you just Super Poly because they can't react to that, correct? Correct. Yeah, so you instantly get uh, a free summon, and then you've got a negation on the field. You actually wouldn't. Oh, but it's fused. Why wouldn't that but work then? It won't have a negate because it specifically has to tribute a monster with a predator counter. Oh, counter. gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's just a funny super poly target in any other deck. Okay, gotcha. That, that makes more sense now. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on now, we've got more from Dimension Force. So we've got Psychic and Punisher. So it's very yeah. easy to summon. One punk, tuner punk, punk. plus, yeah, well, I've been hearing an awful lot of hype about Punk now that some uh, uh, Ant Emancipator players have been messing with the engine. Um, I did not see that coming. Okay, but anyway, so Psychic and Punisher. Um, it says here, number one, while your life points are equal or less than your opponent's, the Synchro Summon card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. Once per turn, you can pay 1,000 life points, target one monster you control and one card your opponent controls, and you get to banish those targets. At the end of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack. Equal oh, what's that in the background? Uh, one second. Please don't oh. do that right now. Oh. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Sorry. I heard something in the background. I didn't know if, uh, if someone was uh, uh, doing some sort of painting or something. Okay. But no, anyways, <laughs> at the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack equal to the difference between both players' life points. And then Divine Dragon, uh, Titan something. Level 10 Light Dragon. You can only use this card's second and third effects once per turn each. This special summon card cannot be destroyed by battle. You can banish three Divine Dragon Titan from your graveyard or among monsters from your face-up field, including this face-up card. Destroy all cards your opponent controls. During the end phase, you can send this card from the top of your deck to the graveyard, equal to the number of dragon monsters you control. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I like the Psychic and Punisher. Um, I, I think that's got some good stuff going on. Grunt, what do you think about this dragon card? Do, do you think this is going to be seen any kind of play? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. The dragon, in all honesty, really sucks. I hope they don't make this a secret rare because it's really not going to accomplish much at the end of the day, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, though, it's there's just not really much to write home about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, again, this is a generically good synchro. On the other hand, here with Punisher, um, I can't really speak enough praise about it. You know, your life points are equal or less than your opponent. So, you know, maybe you're going, maybe this is after you're going first or, yeah, it's just if it's, it's unaffected. So with Punk, you're almost always going to start lower because of their burn effects. So that's why right. Punk can do this. Right. You can just pay another stack to, you know, target a monster and another card again banishing stuff good stuff start of the battle phase it even gains life attack equal to the difference in life points so again it just kind of all balances out in the end okay uh shadow what do you think that dragon's completely worthless since Rajeki's back at three <laughs> I'm I'm sorry but I see no reason to be playing this card even I if you agree. want to do it I'm looking at it going yeah, I'm, I'm not going to play that. <laughs> there's only one reason why I'm excited for a Synchro Monster. That's okay. specifically level 11. Why is that? Metaphys. Oh, okay, okay. Metaphys, Ragnarok, and Daedalus finally have another target they can go into that isn't Star Eater. Oh, that's nice. Absolutely. And it's um, you know, a very easy card to get out. So I, I think that will work well for your deck. You know, that doesn't have crazy summoning requirements. So pretty neat, for sure. Um, moving on. So this is a unique looking card here. What is this? Zek Trike? QU or something like that? But it's always considered as uh, an Insector card. Send whether, one other Insector card from your hand or face-up field to the graveyard. Then you get to activate one of these effects. Choose one Insector monster from your deck and either special summon it or equip it to one Insector monster that you control. Equip one ex Insector, uh, equip spell from your deck to one Insector monster you control. You can only activate uh, one of this card per once per turn. And then Illegal Knight, it's a level seven Dark Fiend monster. You can only use the first and second effects of this card's name each once per turn. During the main phase, if you control no monsters or you control Adventurer Token, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you control Adventurer Token, quick effect, you can target up to two cards your opponent controls. Give uh, control of this card to your opponent, and if you do, return the cards to the hand. Hmm. Okay, Shadow Me, what do you think? Uh, Illegal Knight is along the lines of the Adventurer cards that just continue to make the meta make me want to stop doing things. <laughs> and Zectrike is an incredibly crazy card, specifically in reverse Zectors, just because, let's say you have your Dragonfly out, you equip any card to it, not the Hornet or the Ladybug, which are the best starters in the deck, yeah. but just any of them, you can then use this to send that equipped monster to then special summon, or, or equip an equip spell to then do that card's effect, but then Dragonfly will still trigger. Oh, wow. Jeez, oh, Pete. So this seems like quite the right kind of extender. Is that what you're thinking, Grunt? Um, I don't 
don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, Koho is probably um, one of the weirdest things they had to design, if only because... I don't know. How can I say this? Koho's <laughs> issue is that the fact that you have to pitch a card from your hand, I mean, that's kind of the issue. It has to be an executor card, even. I think that's the biggest complaint is that, yes, it can facilitate combos, but sometimes as a starter, your hand just might not be able to afford the extension itself. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fair point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Great points, gentlemen. Uh, let's move on here. So the next one we have here is, ooh, we're back to the Exosisters. I know we talked about that archetype quite a while ago. So uh, we've got uh, Magnifica, Magnifica, yes, it's a rank 8 lights, warrior, exceeds monster. Uh, it's going to, ooh, you have to have two rank 4 Exosisters exceeds monsters. Must be exceeds summon with the above exceeds materials. This card can make a second attack during each battle phase. Once per turn, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card and banish one card your opponent controls. When your opponent activates a card or an effect, quick effect, you can return one Xyz monster attached to this card as the material to the extra deck. Then you can special summon that monster using this card you control as the material. This material is uh, is an Xyz, it goes with an Xyz summon. Transfer this card's materials to the summoned monster. Then we have no punked die note. Um, and it says here that you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. You can reveal one other punk monster in your hand, special summon this card, or reveal this card. And if you do, send the other card to the graveyard. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one punk monster in your graveyard except a level f the level 5 monster. Special summon it, but you cannot special summon punk... Uh, Die note for the rest of the turn this way. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So, Grunt, I do like the ability to overlay the two level fours and all those materials go with this card. Thoughts you have? So, I think the biggest argument I've heard against the sexy is as cool as the idea is, is why would I summon Magnifica here if I could just go into um, Utopic Future Drago? Or, oh, mm -hmm. because because you can literally fulfill the same summoning requirements, and as cool as this is, you know, have a quick effect banish, which doesn't seem to target. Again, Drago ha Drago has an entire negate option, which I mean, it speaks for itself. I think that this is a fine card. The issue is that as long as um, Topic future Draco exists, it's just not going to be worth doing it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. no, That's that just my opinion, but... No, that makes sense. Um, Shadow, do you agree with that? Do you think that's probably how it's going to go? I feel like it's going to be a nice budget version if you don't want to shell out for Draco Future. Oh, yeah. That's a good point, too. And you guys know me. I'm all about that budget. Because Draco Prince. Future starting to climb quite a bit, isn't it, gentlemen? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just glad I got my copyright. Bird Up is making it yes. ridiculously pricey. Yes, it's very pricey. So Ironic, I do like yeah, that. It is granted, a version. granted, they did get that one card limited, so it's actually a little harder for them now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because that because they would extend and make like several cards, but now they can either go do Draco Future or their normal play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shadow, what do you think of the punk card there? Uh, I think it's just an okay card generically because they all do their synchros and fusion shenanigans, so it's just yeah. an extender. That's nice to have. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a good punk. It's, again, being level 5 means that it's only really going to be applied with its effect. It doesn't really fit the rest of the deck's theming as a level 3 or 8, but that's where the level modulation comes in. So, I don't know. The fact that you can just special summon her and, you know, have early access to, um, you know, a fusion target or being able to use her for Link or any material, honestly, just mm -hmm. to be able to target a punk and bring it back. Yeah. Again, yeah. it's it's good extension. I think that compared to Exosisters, Punk got the better support card here. Yeah, for sure. Not a doubt. Uh, moving on. So we've got Battle Guard O. It's a level one Earth Warrior monster. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn each. 
If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Feast of the Wild level 5 from your deck to your hand. Oh, I love hearing that. Uh, Battle Guard monsters you control gain 500 attack. You can tribute this card to special summon one level 8 warrior monster from your hand. Oh, those aren't bad. And then uh, Pion the Sylvan uh, Dancer. Uh, notice it takes two plant monsters to link off for this. You can only use the first and second effects of the card's name each once per turn. If this card is link summoned, you can uh, excavate up to three cards from the top of your deck. You can special up to t uh, special summon up to two uh, excavated plant monsters, but they cannot be used as link materials. Also send the rest to the graveyard. You can target one plant monster in your graveyard that has a level, and the levels of all face-up monsters this card, this card points to becomes that monster's until the end of this turn. Okay, Shadow Mew, which one do you like the most there? Is that really a question you just asked me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be, to be fair, Peon is a great implant turbo. I specifically hate Battle Guard number zero because its attack points are 50. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, you're right. I didn't to, even notice to, that. To be fair, it's not the first monster which is 50. That goes to the Gizmec Rabbit. <laughs> Never saw it. Still hate this. Yeah, well... And that just know. seems like really weird legacy support. <laughs> it, it kind of is. That's, the, that's kind Keon of the thing. is crazy, though, just because of how I specifically built my plant deck. Is It enables you to either like synchro summon into... In the Aromage Marjoram, that lets you search out Dried Winds, which is crazy. Or you can exceed summon into a Trick, not Trick Star, Trap Trick, Refugia or something. Uh-huh. Just really good generic plant sync links. Link yeah. Spam. Yeah, I think the Link Monster is awesome, without a doubt. Grunt, would you agree? Uh, yeah, I would easily agree that it's a pretty solid card. I don't think that... um. My whole issue with Excavation is that Sylvan itself has kind of been an outdated deck for some time now. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't think that's really um, fair for me to levy against it, if only because, you know, the deck's been doing as much as it can with um, very barely limited. any support. Yeah, I was just going to say very limited support. And people love that deck. I've met so many duelists that that has a fond place in their hearts, uh, that deck, for where it was uh, in the meta when the meta came out that was surrounding it. So um, I'm, I'm happy to see them really catering to what the players are wanting. This is definitely the right move. Uh, moving on now, we've got the Dinofaria uh, Rextrum. It's a level 8 dark dinosaur fusion monster. So one Dinor uh, Foia, I don't know if I'm saying that right. How do Dinorphia. I say this card? Say it again. Dinorphia. 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 Thank you. So one Dinorphia fusion monster plus one Dinorphia monster. You can only use the second and third effects of this card's name uh, once per turn each. One, monsters your opponent controls with an attack equal or higher than your life points cannot activate their effects. Quick effect, you could pay half your life points. Until the end of this turn, the attack of all monsters your opponent controls becomes equal to your life points. Oh, that could be hilarious. Especially if somehow you make, you know, 500 or something. You know, that, that'd be nuts. If this card is destroyed by a battle or by a card effect, you can special summon one level 6 or lower Dinophoria monster from your graveyard. And then we have Dinophoria Frenzy. Uh, it's a normal trap. You can only activate a card with this card's name once per turn. During your opponent's main phase, pay half your life points. Fusion summon one Dinophoria uh, fusion monster from your extra deck using one monster from your deck and one monster from your extra deck. Oh, that's neat. You can, uh, when your opponent activates a card or an effect while your life points are 2,000 or less, you can banish this card from your graveyard, and you take no damage from the opponent's card effects this turn. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Grunt, what do you like here? So, I've been looking at Dinorphia um, for the longest time, ever mm -hmm. since we first saw it. And I remember some people were like, eh, you're going to you know, lose in time, or 
And I kind of get the sentiment. I 100% understand where people are coming from. At the same time, I am pretty darn glad that uh, we got this. This is um, essentially a floodgate on legs, you know, goes without saying. Yeah. Um, because you're burning your life points down to at least 2,000 to 1,000, this thing is practically a one-sided skill drain that can, even if your opponent somehow has effects, you can make their attack, um, you know, become equal to your life points. Yeah. So, like, even Time Lords and stuff can't work around this. I know it sounds stupid, but that's probably the closest example I could think of, you know, a zero attack monster doing something. If that makes so, sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah, this is... um pretty darn good i can't really hate on uh having another way to um you know fusion summon dinorphias with the trap here and again rex here speaks for himself he even gives you an extra summon of any of the uh dinorphias you already summoned so you can literally fusion summon one of them uh fusion into him and then you can float into them if he happens mm -hmm. to get destroyed somehow mm -hmm. which the deck has plenty of uh ways to protect him so it <laughs> As a control player, I don't mind this. I love this a lot, but I understand why some people might have their um, opinions against it. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, Shadow, was I talking with you? I can't remember who I was talking with, but we talked about that there's going to be easier ways to get your life points down to 2,000. And then it's specific, uh, specifically in the Dinophoria archetype, and then there was another card that became broken with it almost. Do you remember what that was we were talking about? Card that had, your, I don't think it was me, a card that has a benefit when your life points are much lower than your opponents. I, I think of a funny one called Handy Gallop. Mm -hmm. what, what does that do? I don't know what that does. Handy Gallop gains attack points equal to the difference in life points between your you and your opponent, but neither player takes battle damage involving it. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. So you just have a 7,000 beat stick that just keeps punching over your opponent's cards. Oh, good gosh. <laughs> there there was, I'm trying to remember if it was in the ban list discussion, maybe, but there is a combo. I'm pretty sure KCS Games found it, where you can literally take your, your Dinophoria monsters all the way down, and then you don't worry about paying any cost after that. And so... Uh I know a card. It's Guiding Ariande. It's a pendulum monster. Okay, what does that do again? You don't pay life points or discard cards to activate counter traps, I think? Yes. Okay, okay. So you essentially turn every counter trap into not having a cost, which is pretty good. Counter fairies usually would run it if they had the room in their deck to search it, but mm -hmm. um, it's seen experimentations in other decks that use counter traps occasionally. Especially since, you know, we got Small World, which can basically form any bridge to find it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you just place it in your Pendulum Zone, and you no longer have to pay for Counter Traps, while you can still pay for your Dinophoria cards, because they're not Counter Traps. Yeah. Oh, gosh. See? So much good thinking, guys. Great stuff. Um, looking here, uh, I was excited to see that Ancient Warriors are getting some more support. I know lots of people have enjoyed using that arch archetype more that they've uh, messed around with Tri Brigade, uh, but now it seems to be more bird up Tri Brigade. But let's look at this Ancient Warrior support. So uh, this is Cruel Dong Zhang, and it's a level six. Uh, and notice he's a Beast Warrior. You can uh, use each effect of the. F uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, I thought it said second for a second. The first and third effects with this card's name once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one level 7 or higher Ancient Warriors monster or one Ancient Warriors continuous spell from your deck to your hand. Oh, that is just really good. Okay, while well, you control a level 7 or higher Ancient Warriors monster, your opponent must pay 400 life points to activate card effects. Love getting the burn on. And then if a monster or monsters is sent from your opponent's graveyard, you can target one card on your opponent's in your opponent's graveyard, banish it, and if you do, draw a card. Ooh, that that's pretty good. And then we have Ancient Warrior Saga, defining the Warlord's demands. It's continuous spell. You can use each uh, among the first and second effects with the card's name once per turn. During your main phase, you can special summon one Ancient Warrior monsters from your hand, and if you do. 
you take damage equal to its level times 100. You can, you, you can send this face-up card from your spell and trap zone to the grave, then target one Ancient Warrior monster on the, on the field, change it to uh, its attribute, and then if you change effect, or wait, yeah, if you activated this effect by targeting a monster your opponent controls, you can uh, take control of it. Ooh, wow, okay. Uh, Shadow, what do you think here? What do you like about these cards? So that first one is just a lot of things all balled into one. It's Masquerade, yeah. it's a Searcher, <laughs> it messes with literally any card that sends stuff to the graveyard. <clears throat> Alistair, Tri Brigade, yes, uh, Dry Tron, yeah. you know, like everything. <laughs> the Ancient Warriors Continuous spell is just kind of a weird version of the, all those old cards that said special summon a monster from your hand if you right. control no cards, except you can do it while you control cards. I don't think the second effect's ever going to matter, though. Mm -hmm. There is, I will give them one bit of credit here. Um, I think it was uh, Liu Feng, which was one of the more recent ones, who also does um, <clears throat> go to your opponent's side of the field if they control a stronger monster or something. Mm -hmm. Like, so there are some niche applications, but yeah, you're definitely going to be using the first effect above all else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. But uh, I do like that there's an option to banish stuff, and if you need to, uh, get in the draw. I mean, that... <laughs> That's a win in my book, um, especially for decks that are so grave reliant. So very interesting for sure. Actually, real fast on the ancient on, yeah. the, on the Dong Zong yeah, is the right fact ahead. that it says when a monster hits the grave, you can target a card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. It's not a monster; Jeez. it's just any card. Wow! That, banish that's the awesome. invocation as soon as it hits. Yeah, that that's really good. <laughs> So, the only thing I want to bring up, which other people have brought up, is that Dong Zhang, I love what he does. It's just that um, a lot of the ancient warriors that are higher level have some innate special summoning claws. You can literally look up, you know, some of the other ones here. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them, especially the sevens and above, have their own innate special summoning effects, kind of like Pankratops. Yeah. But um, even some of the other monsters, they don't usually special summon. So it's like you'd have to either open this spell that they just got with Dong Zhang, who, let's be honest, he's a one of or two of because he's kind of a brick if you don't get to special summon him. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that if they find a, a consistent way, like if they find more ways to get him out of the deck or hand, then yeah, Dong Zhang will see play. I guess the issue is that it, as good as he is, it's just not feasible to bring him out whenever you need him if you don't have the right cards, you mm -hmm. know? So mm -hmm. Great that's point. just that's yeah. just the one point I've heard other Ancient Warriors players bring up. I don't play the deck, but I do remember that the deck does struggle to um, extend with uh, what it already has. No, 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 makes sense. Really good points, guys. But... I do think it's a, a solid addition for that archetype. I, I think it's definitely something that we'll see play. And then we have Ice Jade Curse. It's a continuous spell. You can no. uh, uh, only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. Well, there are Ice Jade Monster and Ice Jade Deaths uh, in your cradle on your field. Your opponent cannot activate the effects of monsters they control to turn their summoned. When a monster or monsters is dropped by battle involving your Ice Jade monster, you can target one of those uh, destroyed monsters and inflict to your opponent equal to its original attack. Hmm. What do you think here, mm. Shadow? I'm just saying, I was calling it before, Ice Jade Control just seems really viable once they get all their cards in one single area together. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we have the one level, like, 10 boy that says your opponent can't activate monster effects if they weren't on the turn they weren't summoned. Right. And this just turns off the opposite field. A lot of cards in the game have effects that resolve on summon, especially starters or extenders. Um, This is literally like skill train. Not a lot of cards can work around this. The only cards I can think of off the top of my head that could really easily work around this in combo would be, um, you know, starting off with some of your Drytron effects to hopefully get around this. Um, hand traps, obviously, are still fair game, so Ghost yeah, Ogre could actually... Yeah. I think Ghost Ogre, honestly, is looking better and better 
with yeah, each Yeah, I've seen that played more that you bring that up, Grunt. That's Ghost Ogre only stops this if you use the second effect, though. I thought Ghost Ogre could also just pop it on activation of the actual no. spell, though. It's when a card that was already face up triggers its effect. Oh, that's right. Yep, well, still, good card. It's an insane <laughs> card. Okay, explain why you feel that way. Well, one of the most meta-prevalent decks right now, I'm sure you've heard of it, is Tri Brigade. Mm -hmm. What's the main thing they do all the time? It's the same thing they always do. Summon Bear Brum, search Revolt, set Revolt, Shurig your turn. This yeah. stops Shurig from doing anything. The only, yeah, the only effects you're getting off of this with Tri Brigade are the ones in the grave, like Hit or Nerval. And those are extenders. They don't really facilitate your plays. Like, sure, your opponent can Revolt into Shurig, but, but this, uh, again, I like that. This kind of stops a lot of these on summon effects, and only a few cards, like I said, can really get around that. So it's, I don't know. Ice Shades aren't looking super, super expensive. I think I've been looking at some of the stuff. I think there may be one secret one Ice Shade in the next step. And even then, I don't think it's going to be that expensive. I don't think Ice Shade's going to be super, super expensive. So, eh. Oh, I hope not. Into. <laughs> so we'll see. But we're um, getting it in the next set. I stayed I stayed Tremora is still only two fifty. Yeah, no, I don't know why I stayed Tremora hasn't gone up. It's been seeing a little more experimentation in decks as far as I know. Well, guys, we're probably gonna have to stop here just because uh I can definitely feel my fatigue from the <laughs> work I had today, especially when I was out shoveling snow.